This is a quick video about influential points, and outliers, and leverage points, and standardized residuals, standardized deleted residuals, and Cook's distance. It is a whole lot of information, and I just want to generally talk about the idea of all these concepts together. I'm not going to go over formulas really formally or any of my concepts really formally. It's all just big picture stuff. Now, um, first off, I want to just say all these items I'm going to talk about in regards to multiple regression. So multiple linear regression specifically. Now the star of the show is influential points. And influential points, uh, the best way I can describe it is it's just um, an observation that influences part of the regression analysis um, to an extraordinary extent, to an unacceptable extent. Uh, so this would be uh, coefficients, predicted responses, hypothesis, it could be any part of the regression analysis. And this observation, either a y value, x value, or a combination of y's and x's, influences our analysis a lot. So this is the goal to detect those influential points. Now the next word, outlier, is probably one you're already familiar with. Now typically we think of outliers in a one-dimensional situation. We have a bunch of values and we want to find the extreme um, really large values or really small values. Now when we're talking about linear regression analysis we can have outliers that are y's or x's. Now in some books I see that outliers are strictly y values and we're only considering y values. And then there's other books that say y or x are outliers and they use the term outliers uh, for both y's and x's. Um, I like to think about it outliers are reserved just for the y values and the reason why I like to think about it that way is because we have this next word leverage point. Now a leverage point we're typically only thinking about x values this is why I like to think of outliers for y's, leverage points for x's. Now when we have multiple linear regression, we might have multiple x's. A leverage point isn't just one x that's really extreme, although it could be, but it is often the combination of x's. And when you have a lot of different predictor variables, it might be hard to detect leverage points because we have so much going on and you can't really see it with just a graph. So that's the idea behind a leverage point. It is a strange or unusual combination of x values compared to all the other x values. Now the next point I want to talk about is the standardized deleted residuals, which uh, is this bullet point down here. Now the standardized deleted residuals, um, again I don't want to talk about too much into the formula about it, but the main focus of the standardized deleted residuals is actually the y values. It uh, standardizes uh, the y values to make kind of more of a traditional outlier that we typically think of. Um, so you would check to see if it's about two standard deviations above, so forth. Um, the really helpful thing about standardized residu uh, deleted residuals is that it lets us um, conduct a t-test and helps us perform a test which will tell us if an observation could reasonably occur if a model was true. That's the really helpful part about standardized deleted residuals. Standardized residuals, on the other hand, are a little more intuitive and a little more familiar, except we don't have a simple test that we can do, which is why we look at these. Although I will say if these standardized deleted residuals are pretty big, then the standardized residuals are typically pretty big. Which brings me back to standardized residuals. So standardized residuals are helpful and are often talked about in the same um, sort of context or same sort of time as all these other concepts. But the main thing that I found them helpful for is the, um, checking our assumptions of a model. So checking if our error terms are uh, normally distributed and uh, checking if um, our, we have homeostasticity, so our variance remain consistent and the error terms are independent. That's their main function, or at least the main function I use them for, 
versus standardized deleted residuals give us a test for whether or not our Y values are unusual. Now, lastly, but not least, Cook's distance. Cook's distance is pretty cool. Normally, I don't really like Cook's distance because I'm like, oh, there's another tool that we have to use that tells us all the same things. But I've been looking at it and reading it and playing with it, and I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not going to show all the formulas here, but Cook's distance helps us get one full measure that accommodates both X and Y observations going on. So uh, what Cook's distance is it measures how all fitted values change when one observation is deleted. So it's working in both Y's and X's and detecting unusualness. It's pretty neat and it kind of combines the idea of leverages and standardized deleted residuals. So uh, Cook's distance is cool. It does not have a test like the standardized deleted residuals, uh, but it's still pretty interesting and there's some rules of thumb that you can follow.